For this tutorial, we're looking at the options for installing WordPress locally on your own computer. This can be very useful if you want to develop your website in conjunction with your existing website, so that customers don't stumble across a half-finished version of your new site. It can also be useful because you don't need the internet when you're working on your site if it's installed locally, unless you want to install plugins and new themes, which is something we'll be looking at later on in the tutorial. The way in which we install WordPress locally is by using a piece of software called XAMP. Now, XAMP is a free piece of software which is available from a website called Apache Friends. If you search Google for XAMP, X -A -M -P -P, you'll see that the first result is apachefriends.org. If I just quickly click on that. Now, there's many versions of XAMP available for different operating systems. The one which we're concerned with is XAMP for Windows, but equally the same rules apply for Linux or for Mac. Um, but for now, I'm just going to click XAMP for Windows. Now, there's an awful lot of software that comes bundled with XAMP, including things like Tomcat and FileZilla FTP. Um, but for our, for our purposes, all we're going to need is the basic version of XAMP. So if I just scroll down, uh, there's two versions available, the older one with PHP version 5.4 or the newer one with PHP version 5.5. All you need to do is click on the installer and it'll begin downloading to your computer from SourceForge. Um, while that's downloading, we're also going to need to look at uh, downloading WordPress itself. So if we go to WordPress.org, uh, on, on most pages in WordPress, there's a big link in the top right there just to download WordPress. If I just click that, that takes us to the, uh, the download page for the latest version. So I'm just going to click download on that as well. And that also downloads to our computer. I'm going to cancel those two actually because I've already got them on the computer anyway. Um, once they're downloaded, all you need to do is run the XAMP installer, which is something I'm going to do now. And we're going to install it using the default settings. So as it's loaded, just click Next. Don't worry about any of these, just click Next. We're going to install it into the default location, which is the C drive in the XAMP folder. I'm just going to click Next. Oh, it's saying it's not empty. I'm just going to write XAMP2 and click Next. We don't need to worry about that, so I'm going to untick that and click Next. And Next again. So while that's installing, I'm going to, I'm going to extract the WordPress files, which are on my desktop. And I'm just going to extract them to the desktop as well. So remember, I downloaded the complete WordPress installation from WordPress.org. Now, of course, even though I've got the WordPress files on the computer, this is a bit technical now. Because they're PHP files, we can't actually run them or view them on the computer without a web server like XAMP. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Now, while that's installing, I'm actually going to pause the video for a moment. And I'll come back to it when it's done. OK, now that that's finished installing, gives me the option to start the control panel. Uh, we're going to actually want to start that, so I'm just going to leave that ticked and click Finish. Now what the control panel does is allows you to start and stop things like Apache and Apache rather and MySQL and things like FileZilla as well. We're not going to need to use FileZilla, Mercury or Tomcat, so we're not going to worry about those at all. But for now I'm going to start Apache, I'm going to start MySQL. So what that's doing is Apache is the web server and MySQL is the database. So it's going to run in the background there and once that turns green that's ready to go. So while that's sorting itself out I'm going to minimize that. If I open my uh, Explorer and go to Computer C XAMP, I know it's XAMP2 but normally XAMP, and HTDocs, Whatever you, whatever you place in htdocs is accessible as a normal web page on your computer. So in this example, I'm going to just drag the WordPress file that I've downloaded from WordPress.org and extracted and put that in there. If I now visit on my computer, localhost forward slash the name of the file. So I'm going to put localhost forward slash WordPress and it opens up what's in that folder. So if I rename that folder to the name of the new site, so I'm going to put my new website and now in the browser I'm going to go localhost forward slash my new website loads up exactly the same 
So immediately it's, it's, it's telling me that it doesn't seem to be a WP config file. So I'm going to create a configuration file and it does it automatically. Uh, and next it's going to ask for some database details. Now I haven't created a database yet, so I'm going to open a new tab or a new window and just type in localhost. So this brings up the uh, the XAMPP control panel. So I'm going to go into English, obviously. Uh, and down the left here are all the different options uh, from the control panel. But all we're interested in for now is PHP my admin. So I'm going to click on that. So this lets us um, this gives us a web interface um, to create our SQL databases, our MySQL database that any sort of web application these days is going to need. So if I just go to databases on the top tab here. I can then create a new database and give it a name. So I'm going to call it my new database. You can give it any name you want because remember it's only on your computer so it's just for your reference. And I'm going to click create. Now with any SQL database you're going to have to have um, users that are added to that database and they've got certain privileges. Out of the box uh, if I go to users um, there are certain users that come uh, pre-installed with uh, XAMPP. So we've got uh, root, which doesn't have a password, and root for Linux, which doesn't have a password, and that sort of thing. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to add a new user. So out of the box, uh, we don't really need to to do this, but for um, for sort of uh, for for this sake, we're going to. So I'm going to add a user, and give them a name. So I'm going to put uh, new user. So that's my username. I'm going to add it to localhost and give it a password. So let's give it uh, something nice and basic because it's only for my use, remember. Uh, obviously you wouldn't use a simple password in, on, on a live environment. Um, database for user. We're going to say none. We're going to check all and click add user. So now that's added a person called new user to localhost with the password that we just set. Uh, unfortunately, what's happened there is we've added a user, but he's not actually allocated to that database. So I'm going to go to the new database, which I just created, and go to privileges on the top, more and privileges, and I'm going to add new user to it. So notice at the moment it says users have an access to my new database. So I must have done it right. So it's added new user to it. But if we didn't have the user there that we've just added, we can add a new user there, the same as we just did previously. So for now we've got our new user with the password that we just set. So that's all I need to do in uh, in phpMyAdmin. You can create tables manually from this. Uh, but WordPress is going to do that when it, when it installs itself anyway. So I'm just going to close this tab and go back to our WordPress install. So if I just click let's go, the database name is the one we just made, so my new database. The username is new user. The password is the one we just set, remember it's a very poor password. Uh, the database host is localhost because it's on our own computer and we can leave the prefix as default. Um, now unfortunately the, the table prefix for every WordPress install by default is WP. Now um, for sort of hacking and security concerns uh, you might want to change that in a live environment to something else. Uh, so just for, just for argument's sake I'm just going to put anything but WP there and click Submit. Now this is bringing up, uh, this is uh, to do with my um, firewall, I'm just going to click allow, create rule, allow. That's probably not going to come up on your computer, but that'll depend on your security setting. So I'm just going to click run the install because that's shown that it's communicating with the database. And what, what that's done in the background there is added the WordPress tables to the SQL database that we've just created. Um, so this is the section, this is only step three I think, where you add the title. So this is the title of our website. So I'm going to give it the title of our website, LearnWP Online. This is where we set a username. Now, by default, everyone chooses something like admin, but of course, we don't. We'd never want to use admin, so I'm just going to put my own name followed by admin. So Nathan admin, and I'm going to set it to quite a poor password again. Now, remember, 
for a live environment you do want a secure password because this is what which this is what secures your entire WordPress install. I'm going to put my email address there. And this is where you can untick if you don't want search engines to index the site. Obviously on the, on a website that's on localhost search engines aren't going to find it anyway, so that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to click install WordPress. And that's the last step. So if I just minimize that, remember this is our um this is our folder under C XAMP HT Docs, and there's the uh, the WordPress documents. So this acts the same as your FTP server. So when, when something is uploaded to your FTP server, it's the same as being dropped into this file here. So if we look at the file structure here, this is exactly the same as I said as you'd find in an FTP server. So under WP content, for example, we've got our plugins. And if we go back there, we've got our themes. So 2013 and 2012 out of the box. Um, and you can, of course, add plugins and themes manually by just dropping them into there after they're extracted. So for now I'm just going to close that. If I go back to the web browser and click login, it asks me for the username and password that I just set and login. and we're straight in. So that's how you install WordPress locally on your computer. Um, now remember this will work exactly the same as a normal website. So if we go into the dashboard, we can go to posts and add posts and pages and add pages and do everything like that. Um, also, we can change the appearance and the themes and the widgets and different bits and pieces and add new plugins. Now, the only limitation of installing it locally on your computer is that without an internet connection, you can't add new plugins or add new themes, obviously, because they need an internet connection to, uh, to download them. But apart from that, you can use it completely the same as it would be if it was online. Uh, but of course, it's an awful lot more quicker because it's, uh, it's loading on your local machine and not having to contact the server all the time. Um, so once it's fully developed and you're completely happy with how the, uh, how the website looks, you're able to then completely export the whole WordPress install and import it into a, a, an off uh, an off-site server so that other people are able to access it. Um, there's going to be a later video tutorial on how to do that. So for now, um, I'll leave you to it. Uh, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions in the meantime. Thanks very much for listening.